this out with me. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you my name. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day come on let's sing of his mercy now your mercy has saved my soul yes it has and your freedom is all that I know the old man you the old man you Jesus when I met you Oh, what a day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Alright, let's, let's bring it sound. I want to sing this part out and believe it deep in our souls That Jesus has saved us, come on I needed rescue, my sin was heavy But chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you called my name come on. I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day.
You have been so, so kind to me And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Yeah Even when you fight against him, I'm gonna sing this out when I was your foe. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. I felt no worth, you paid it all for me, yes you did You have been so, so kind to me Sing this out And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Come on, sing that out. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No war you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no war you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found Leaves a 99 I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God
Father, we just thank you so much for this time of worship that we have together, where we can come together and worship the God that paid it all for us. I pray that you remind every single person watching the great price that you paid, the blood that you shed for us. God, in the best that we know how, we give it all to you. We lay down our lives and worship to you. So we pray all these things in your son's precious, holy and mighty name, the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. You guys enjoy the rest of the service. Hey guys, it's week nine of Fruit of the Spirit. Now this series is a deep dive into the idea of spiritual fruit. And the reason we're taking this deep, deep dive is because fruitful is the word guiding us for the entire year. And to kick off the year, we learn that we need to dig our roots deep into the riverbank of God's living water. And it's through that connection that God can bear spiritual fruit in our lives. And it's because we have learned these things here at Akuo Church, we want to be fruitful this year and every year after that. So this week, we actually have a special guest joining us. Her name is Desley Laglu, and she is a part of the Park Community Church. There, Des is the pastoral resident at the park, so she will regularly teach on Sundays and lead their women's ministry. In addition to all of that, Des and her family are like family to me and Lauren. As a matter of fact, Lauren and I are godparents to one of her beautiful daughters. And not only that, I served as man of honor at her wedding. So we're, we're pretty tight. So with all that being said, I can tell you that I completely trust her to bring you the word today. So without further ado, here is Desley Laglu. Good morning, Akuo. It is my great honor to be sharing God's word with you this morning. Hey, my name is Desley Laglu, and I'm so happy to be here with y'all this morning. I've been friends with Pastor Humby since we were in an economics class together at UTSA, and he has been making fun of my hair ever since. I'm a, mar I'm a married woman, married to my generous and patient husband, Erstas, and he is a first-generation Greek-American. Together, we've been blessed with three precious and wonderful Greeksican lady babies. They're half Greek and half Mexican, so I call them our Greeksicans. They can't understand why they can't be whole Mexican and whole Greek just yet, so I guess I'll just have to let them sit with that one for a time. My girls and I are a homeschooling family. We've been homeschooling for 10 years now, and I realize that I'm learning right alongside them. The motto for me these days is, you just have to be one step ahead of them. So I'm happy to share that all four of us girls in our family, we're still alive, we're still learning, and my three girls still love me. So that's where we are right now. When Humby asked me if I would preach here at Akuo, and y'all were in the Fruit of the Spirit ser sermon series. Um, pick, a ser pick a fruit of the Spirit, Des, he said. Um, I was immediately drawn to kindness and gentleness. I don't know why, they just kind of stood out at me. But I really wanted God to lead me to the one that he wanted me to preach on. So I asked him, Father, which one, kindness or gentleness? Kindness or gentleness? Kindness, kindness, right? You want me to preach on kindness? I can totally do kindness, Lord. That's the right one, right? All the while, he was calmly, patiently placing gentleness right in front of me, almost like he was placing the word right in my lap. But I was sure that he was mistaken. He was clearly not mistaken. I was the one who was mistaken. I was acting chiflada. I was being a total brat, throwing a fit because I wanted my way. So I dragged my feet a little bit more but Humby was gracious in checking in on me. He was like, Des, have you heard which one God wants you to preach on? And I knew, but I didn't want to commit just yet because maybe I was hearing God wrong and he really meant kindness. See, Chief Lava. So I obeyed our father and I replied to Humby and I told him that I would be preaching on gentleness and all was good. This decision was made even sweeter when I was able to listen to Humby's sermon on kindness a few weeks back. I believe y'all got a chance to spit on your screens and say the Hebrew word for kindness, chesed. 
I echo Humby's example of his maternal grandparents showing chassay. I didn't get the joy of knowing Humby's grandpa, but I have been blessed by knowing his grandmother, and she showed me great kindness, one Christmas Eve in particular. It was during our college years, so they welcomed me into their family celebration as one of their own, and his grandmother even had a turquoise jewelry box as a Christmas gift waiting for me to open right next to her precious grandchildren. That Christmas Eve has stayed with me all these years because of the kindness that Humby and his family showed to me. I especially remember a loving hug from his grandma. So what would have happened if I didn't listen or obey God? I believe he would still have had his way. His truth would have still been spoken because nothing can stop what God is doing. Nothing, not even me being chiflada. But it is better to follow his way listening to him and choosing to follow his lead. So here we are, this wonderful day, digging into the word of the spirit. This week, we're honing in on gentleness as a fruit produced by the spirit through each and every one of us. Galatians 5, through 23 says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Now, I feel like it's important to recognize that all of the fruit of the Spirit are for each and every one of us. We are all able to have this fruit produced in and through us. The fruit can only be manifested, can only be on display, exhibited, attested to, and reflected in and through us because of the Holy Spirit in us. Theology professor and author Dan Durrani says, whether loud or quiet, male or female, powerful or powerless, every disciple should be gentle. You are that disciple he's speaking of. When I hear the word gentle and gentleness, I think of my hands holding or touching with respect and care. I think of calm words spoken and time taken to consider what I wanna say. As I read more about this fruit, it started to become more alive to me. To gain the fruit of gentleness is to be teachable. It's a humble heart posture, not having a superior attitude, not demanding my rights be upheld, but seeing others who are in need of help and reaching out to extend them the help, even if I am disadvantaged, even if I am inconvenienced or put in an uncomfortable situation. Further, I believe that as followers of Christ, we're supposed to seek out others who are in need of help, and we're supposed to extend them that help. In short, it is wanting others to win. Gentleness written in this scripture in the Greek is praotes, and it means not being overly impressed by a sense of one's self-importance. Isn't that what Coach Pop always tells, um, talks about when the Spurs are drafting new players? They're always looking to bring people into the organization who have gotten over themselves. That's how they have built such an amazing team. They have cultivated an environment where the team overrides the individual. We can see all of the fruit of the Spirit throughout Jesus's ministry. Jesus is the most important person who has ever walked this earth. But instead of proclaiming his greatness and promoting himself, he lifted up the poor, the sick, the marginalized, the abused, the broken, hurting people, and he lavished attention on them. Jesus wanted others to win. He exalted the name of his Father in heaven by giving God the glory and the credit. This is what we are to imitate. I stumbled into God showing me my lack of gentleness right about this month last year. You know, when COVID first hit our South Texas region and we were all called into quarantine, what I recognize now were his wise and gentle words saying to me, you are all trying to figure this out. Y'all are doing the best you can with what you have. Like a fly buzzing around my head, I would like mindlessly swat at those wise words, trying to get those thoughts away from me. All the while, I was wrapped up in my own thoughts and expressing my own frustrations to my husband, Erstas. Why are so-and-sos still having dinners? How did so-and-so still get to go on their family vacation? 
How come so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so aren't wearing their mask when they're out together? I see them on Instagram. Truth be told, I wanted to be doing all those things. I don't want to be in quarantine, be limited to where I could go or to have to stop life. And you know, if I couldn't do it, then no one should be able to either. I was not wanting others to win. I was passing so much judgment. I was angry, condemning, and by the way I spoke of the so-and-sos, I wanted to destroy them. God kept at it and he would not let me go. Y'all are all trying to figure this out. You're all doing the best you can with what you have. His gentleness for me when I was living my life my way, it was abundant. He had something for me in this time of COVID that I couldn't understand and I couldn't see because I was fighting him and I was judging my brothers and sisters. And one day I heard him. I actually heard what he was saying to me. You're all trying to figure this out. You're all doing the best you can with what you have. I felt so bad for my judgment. In all honesty, I felt gross because I didn't care if my friends, Instagram acquaintances, family members, were winning or not. I just cared that they weren't doing what I thought was best in this unprecedented time. By critiquing and judging the way my brothers and sisters were handling our pandemic-ridden world and living their lives, I was exalting myself above everyone else. There was no humility in me. There was no gentleness in my thoughts and words about my brothers and sisters, and I was not wanting them to win. I was wrong to judge them and I was wrong to not want them to win. Our God is better. Like the good father he is, he was relentless over me. He was patient, he did not give up on me, and he will not give up on you. He showed me my error-filled ways by calmly reminding me, you're all trying to figure this out. You're all doing the best you can with what you have. God loves each of us, and we are all different. What he's teaching me right now is more than likely not what he's currently teaching you. So for COVID, as far as what I can understand, those quarantine restrictions that he was asking me to obey and follow were for my safety and the safety of those I was typically in contact with. But more importantly, I learned there was freedom, freedom from this heavy burden that I had created for myself by making my own plans that I would fill my time with instead of following God. I was following myself. I believed God wanted me back, following him and not myself. Throwing a fit and judging others was a symptom of me, not liking what God was asking me to do. I was not allowing God to use the fruit of the spirit in and through me. Being gentle with others is wanting the best for them and wanting them to win even when we disagree with them. Our culture seems to promote and encourage us to be savage and solitary, but Jesus's culture, Jesus's way says praos. Remember the Greek word for gentle? It's used again in the Beatitudes in the book of Matthew. Matthew 5, three through 12 says, Jesus invites us to join him and what he is doing by telling us how our posture must be. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn and the meek. He is instructing us Perhaps with the word meek in this passage of scripture. Do not be overly impressed by a sense of your self-importance. The poor in spirit, they know their need for God's grace. When we take our spiritual poverty, which is our sinfulness to God, he gives us his kingdom. We are all humans and therefore we are all sinners who are in need of grace and mercy and forgiveness. When we realize this and mourn our sin, we become meek and gentle. The byproduct is the fruit of the spirit, gentleness. This is where Jesus, being perfect, always was, which becomes clear to us when we go back to remember events that he was a part of, like the story of a particular woman in the book of John. Now, John is a close friend of Jesus, and this book contains John's firsthand account of events at the time that Jesus was teaching people here on earth. John's main goal in this book was to tell people that Jesus is alive, he is real, and that Jesus can change your life forever. So, during one of the events John records, there is a woman who is caught in adultery. John 8, 2 through 11. So scripture says, 
But early the next morning, he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down, and he taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him. They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and he said, All right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and he wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. They are setting Jesus up with this question. And this woman is collateral damage. Jesus knows all of this. Jesus is calm. He is stooping to the ground writing. One could point out that Jesus in this low posture is lovingly identifying with the hu humiliation of this woman at this very point in time. As per Jesus' typical interaction with his father's creation, us humans, he identifies with, cares for, and eases the woman's embarrassment. He continues to write on the ground because verses 10 through 11 say, then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Prouse, gentle, strength under control. He is putting others in front of himself. This woman has committed a sin and her penalty, it was death. But Jesus forgave her, showed her gentleness, and she passed from sin and death, a death sentence to forgiveness and life. He wanted this woman to win. Jesus also calmly and gently uses this same moment to remind the Pharisees and the scribes of the truth. Because the truth is that what Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Pharisees and the scribes, they had no right to be concerned about this woman's sin. Jesus exposed a common sin amongst all of us, even to this day. This desire to punish the sin of others while ignoring our own sin. I feel this completely. COVID judgment right here. There is a place for exposing, rebuking, and directly dealing with sin in the lives of God's children. But it must always be done with a heart that recognizes that we ourselves are sinners. And when we have that truth, Confronting sin is done with praotes, gentleness, with humility, tears, and a broken heart for that person, rather than with anger, condemnation, and destruction. Jesus wanted these Pharisees to win too. He showed gentleness with them here. Jesus knew all along the evil that the Pharisees were plotting to do, even before they spoke a word to him. Jesus could have literally melted the Pharisees and the scribes' faces off their heads. He could have shot lasers out of his own eyeballs and fired them down to nothing. At the very least, he could have lost his temper, yelled, and called them out in front of everyone in the temple for their hypocrisy. In Jesus' gentle way, he dealt with the Pharisees by calmly pointing out their sin and then giving them an opportunity to repent and reconcile, just as he had given the woman. Paul reminds us again in Galatians 6.1, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Jesus had just shown us how to do this. He did not agree with how the Pharisees and the scribes were acting, but he continued to treat them with gentleness so that they might win too. How have you dealt with people in your life? Did you respond gently or did you call them out? Were you meaning to do some damage? How have people dealt with you throughout your life? Can you recall a time when someone embarrassingly called you out? Could you even focus on what you potentially did wrong? Or were you focused on the pain that it caused you? Have you ever experienced someone gently responding to something you did? How did that make you feel? God wanted me to win by obeying him and preach on gentleness. So he persisted in speaking with me and directing me. 
Humby's grandma, she wanted me to win by welcoming me into her home and including me in their family celebrations. God's pursuit of me showed me the error of my ways in my not being gentle with others. My critical judgment, it would never have allowed me to want anyone to win. And that is just plain wrong. God through Jesus here on earth displayed gentleness on top of gentleness with the woman caught in adultery and the Pharisees who used her as a pawn. He showed how big his love is for us, that he fought for everyone to win. But the story showed us how some people will respond to God's gentleness with the Holy Spirit's gentleness in them and others will choose to not. How has God shown you gentleness? How have you responded to his gentleness? Who is he asking you to be gentle with? What is holding you back from doing that? We see Jesus display his gentleness on this day so many years ago when he entered the capital city of Jerusalem at the time of Passover. Passover is the feast celebrating when God set the Jewish people free from being enslaved by Pharaoh back in Egypt. The last plague was the angel of death, being sent down to take the life of every firstborn in the household in Egypt. But Jewish people were told to place the blood of a perfect lamb over their door frames so that the death could pass over their families and their firstborns, they would be safe. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. A donkey, not a war horse, a donkey. A sign of humility and peace. Not at all what the Jewish people were expecting because Jesus was coming to bring peace, not war. Strength under control. Jesus was honored with palm leaves laid down before him by the Jewish people who were there to celebrate the Passover. These palm leaves were a symbol of victory, peace, humility, and gentleness. The opposite of what the world then and the world now believes is the way to conquer the world. But Jesus knows better. His gentleness was on display. No knives, no war horses, no massive army, just Jesus on a donkey, only him. Walking in to lay down his life for you and for me, so let's be real. The people who deserve to get lasers and rocks thrown at is us. But instead, Jesus shows us gentleness by freely laying down his life for us. Jesus shows us the ultimate gentleness. So today, we celebrate with all the other Christ followers and we remember Jesus walking to be sacrificed for us. A servant king who loves his people more than himself. Strength under control. All glory and honor is Jesus's. He showered us with relentless, selfless, never-ending love. So here at Akuo, I hear that no one prays alone, and you are not alone. Today, if you're feeling that God is calling you to follow him and you want to connect to Jesus, man, I would love to lead you in a prayer. Would you bow with me? Father God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for loving me so much that you sent your only son to die on the cross for my sins, all of them. I do not deserve any of your goodness, but you love me and you desire to be close to me. And so right here, I declare the best I know how, that I believe in you and I'm gonna follow you for the rest of my days. Amen. Akuo Church, I would love to pray over us. So like Humby says, whether you have been a Jesus follower for these last few seconds or last few decades, allow me to pray God's word over us today. Lord God, may we learn to dig our roots deep into the riverbank of your living water. And I pray, God, that each of us would allow you to produce gentleness through us. We remember Jesus' gentle way of his strength under control, and that we can do this very same thing in our lives. But we need your power, Lord, and that power only comes from you, God. So let us trust in you fully, yield to you only, and allow us to bear the fruit of gentleness this week and forevermore in your son's precious and powerful name. Amen.
Now, will all of you join me in giving it up for Des? Just like type in online, if you're watching online, throw some like emojis in there, you know, some exciting explosions or like the dancing lady, you know, uh, just, just do all that and, and just let her feel our love here at Akuo. Uh, but seriously, thank you, Des, for your message today. We love you so much. Okay, guys, next week, we are going to continue in our series for the Spirit. We're actually gonna conclude our Fruit of the Spirit series with self-control. Now, this is gonna be a service that you don't wanna miss out on because also, it's Easter. Easter Sunday, next Sunday, 8.30 and 10 o'clock. Now, also happening on Easter Sunday at the Pavilion at 100 Quinton Road at 11.30, we're gonna have an Easter egg hunt. We've bought 1,500 eggs, we're filling them with candy. There's gonna be an Easter bunny there. There's gonna be photo ops, free paletas. Guys, show up if you feel comfortable. We want you to do that. Now, next, I wanna to talk to you about how we practice generosity here at Akul. What we do is practice the biblical method of giving called tithing, which means giving a first fruit 10% offering to the storehouse, which is your local church. Now, we know that when you trust God with anything in your life, you receive a blessing in that area, right? It's the same thing when it comes to tithing and your finances. Now, I'm not saying that because you tithe, you're gonna like end up with, you know, one of those crazy new Mustangs that are like a four-door Mustang and electric and, and I don't know what they're doing, but it, it's crazy, right? Uh, you're not gonna end up with one of those because you tithe, but what will happen is that you will receive spiritual blessings in your life. So we want you to grow closer to God by experiencing this very spirit, uh, practical discipline known as tithing. Now, we understand that that might not be a possibility for you right now. Things might be really tough for you and your family. So we, we get that. Now, if you and your family are in that position right now, we wanna link to you. We wanna help you guys out during this time. So if you need anything at all, please reach out to us. Or if you know someone that needs some help, let us know. All you have to do is go to our website, akuo.church, and click on the Contact Us link. You can also send me an email directly at humby.cervera at akuo.church, or you can call and text us directly at 210-901-8785. Now, if you're willing to tithe here at Akuo Church, the way you can do that is by going to our website, akuo.church. Now, when you get there, all you have to do is click on the giving link and follow the instructions. We also have our text-to-tithe option. For that, all you have to do is text AKUO, A-K-O-U-O, and the dollar amount you want to tithe to the number 77977. If you don't want to give electronically, we also have our P.O. Box available if you'd like to send a tithe through check. For that, all you have to do is mail your tithe to AKUO, P.O. Box 100-125, San Antonio, Texas, 78201. Now, one last thing. I just want to remind you guys about our Zoom group that happens every single Wednesday night. This is a great way for us to get together and hear how God is bearing fruit in us and how we can share it with one another. For all the links to the Zoom group, all you have to do is go to any of our social media pages or our website. Join us every Wednesday night at 7.30. Okay, guys, that's all that we have for you today. I just want you to know, like I let you know every single week, I love you and I'm praying for all of you all week long. So before we go, let me just pray over you one last time. So uh, Jesus, as everyone clicks off their browser, turns off their TV, and puts away their phone, I ask that you would continue to speak to them. I ask that you would be moving in their lives and show them, remind them of the gentleness that you have for them. Remind them of the ways that you have showed them love in their lives and ask them to have that gentleness overflow from their life into somebody else's. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. We love you, and we pray all of these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. All right, guys, that's it. We will see you on Wednesday.